Hello everyone, welcome again. In this Zephyr 4 Jira tutorial, we are going to learn how to use traceability matrix within Zephyr 4 Jira. Now traceability matrix comes below the reporting section of Jira. So we have already understood about the test summary and test metrics reports that are available. And traceability matrix is very widely used matrix um, in software testing or software development to basically uh, understand what is the overall coverage of the requirements that you get right so um, in software testing when you are writing any test case it should relate back to the requirement okay and when we talk about the agile development approaches now so we get the requirement in form of user stories now for those user stories, we need to write either the BDD test cases or the general uh, usual test cases that we use to write in other approaches, waterfall approaches as well. So those test cases need to basically suffice or need to relate to the user stories or the requirement. And once they are linked to the requirement, there uh, the, the traceability matrix is formed, which gives you the details of how the coverage for that particular requirement or, or what is the quality coverage or what are the test cases that are covering the uh, requirement or the acceptance criteria for that particular user story. So let's go ahead and go to the traceability matrix in Zephyr for Jira. So under the reporting section, I'll go to the traceability matrix. And in Zephyr for Jira, there are two types of um, you know traceability matrix. So once the traceability matrix report gets open, right? So if you want to, uh, you know, go through the documentation, click on the question mark sign and you will you you'll be able to read uh, the documentation, official documentation about the traceability matrix in Zephyr. But if you go to the report type here and click on the drop down, you will see there are two traceabilities, uh, forward traceability and the backward traceability. When we talk about the forward traceability, the forward traceability means the traceability from the requirements uh, to, you know, the test cases, executions and defect. OK, so first thing you get in the software development is basically the requirement, right? So you have the requirement and then requirement is the source of truth to basically start work on the development activities or writing the test case and then executions and uh, within those execution if the test case fail you log the defect so forward traceability starts from requirement then tests how many tests are linked to the requirement then executions how many executions happen and defect if we talk about the backward traceability it um, traces back from the defect so for example you raised a defect backward traceability will help you to analyze that defect and will help you to figure out against which requirement that defect has been raised okay so these are the two types of traceability reports that you will get in Zephyr for Jira. OK, so let's uh, select forward traceability. And as we know, forward traceability is basically from the requirement. So in the issue type, if you are looking for forward traceability, do not choose all in the issue type because in terms of requirement, we get the requirement in in the agile development and in form of user stories and epic, right? So you can select story and epic if you are looking for traceability of epic and story. And then you will see the traceability. So here you have the requirement and then how many test cases are being associated to that particular user story. So in this case, if you expand this, this particular user story has four test cases, right? And then how these test cases have been executed. So from these tests, which executions uh, have been done? So uh, for for which or basically in which execution test cycle that you have created, these test cases have been executed. So for example, RT33 has been executed as part of clone V1.0 regression test cycle then uh, this has been uh, you know not executed uh, then 35 and 36 have been uh, executed and part of the execution cycles okay so this 36 has been part once executed as part of you know v1.0 regression and once executed as part of ad hoc 
execution cycle. So all these details you will see in here in the executions section. Then next it will show you the traceability that for this particular, you know, four test cases, four executions were done and how many defects were raised, right? So, and then below that you will see for each of the test cases where it was executed and how many defects were raised. So if none defects were raised, you will see none. Uh, if the defects are raised and linked, then you will see the defect linked here, right? So you, you can see very clear picture here that yes, this is my story and whether the test cases that are linked to this particular story are sufficient to basically, you know, test this whole requirement or whether these test cases are uh, okay to ensure that the quality of this particular user story or the acceptance criteria will be met. If there are any gaps, then there will be, you know, easily you can figure out within as per the within the team and add more test cases if required. So this is the beauty and the advantage of having traceability matrix. And now because this comes automatically out of the box, then you don't have to prepare these in Excel. And, you know, um, that's very tedious uh, approach of creating the traceability matrix. So this is the forward traceability. Uh, and you know that, you know, uh, if you have a defect where in which cycle this defect was found, it was found in ad hoc. And this is linked to the this particular test case RT36. And this RT36 test case is part of this particular requirement, right? The user story. Uh, now I have filtered out based on story in Epic. If you want to, if you want, if you in your project, you consider uh, the requirement, the task as the requirement as well. You know, you can choose the task as well uh, and then filter out the traceability matrix. Now coming back to the backward traceability. So if I select backward traceability in that particular case, the backward traceability starts from the defect, then executions, test and requirement, right? Now in the type, I don't want all the issue type because in the backward traceability, I'm only interested into the defect because the backward traceability links from the defect to the requirement. So just select the bug and filter out the results and you will see all the bugs in the defect section and then the backward traceability will start. So RT51 is a defect which has been raised, which is not fixed yet. It is still in to do. So the status will be shown here itself and whether you know when this defect was found will be shown here or which execution happened because of which this defect found so if none execution is shown here that means this was not found as part of any execution okay but rt50 if we see this was found as part of clone you know hyphen v 1.0 regression ui test execution cycle um, that failed and this is this defect is linked to this particular test case and then this test case is part of the two requirement okay so this is how the backward traceability looks if i expand this you will get a more detailed view here so you have a defect how uh, which which executions happen or which test executions uh, happen because of which you know uh, in which this defect was raised you you will see that here uh, the test cases will be shown here and these test cases are linked to these two requirements so rns 10 and rns 30 here right so this is what the backward traceability will look like so from the defect uh, execution tests and requirement and forward traceability is from the requirement uh, how many tests are linked to it um, uh, whether those test cases have been executed if executed in which cycle and then if those test cases passed or failed if failed how many defects have been raised and linked right so this is very very important concept so traceability matrix in software testing is very important concept and once it comes to zephyr for jira it is available out of the box so you don't have to worry at all just know how to use traceability matrix within zephyr for jira so that's all for this tutorial hope it was helpful and clear Please do share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.